This video will describe a classic TESOL reading activity, a jigsaw. However, this is my take on the jigsaw activity, jigsaw storytelling. Many of your students may know Jigsaw from the movies Saw, but we're not talking about this guy. We'll be talking about Jigsaw as a storytelling technique. The examples that you'll see throughout this video have been taken from a picture-based reader called True Stories in the News. This activity is as simple as it sounds, so let me tell you how it works. Each student gets a part of a story. I don't want to make the piece too easy or too difficult, so I usually give each student about three sentences of a story. Here's what a typical story might look like when it is all mixed up. I would print this paper, laminate it, and then cut it into the six strips. I try to break the story down into six pieces so that each story and each group has six students. I found this to be just about the perfect number. It's the real sweet spot for this activity. After giving each student their part of the story, I will give everyone one minute to read their three sentences. When that one minute is finished, I'll give students another minute to summarize the three sentences, to cut down the three sentences into one, or even smaller, into one keyword. For example, I might use, a man wants to eat fast food, or simply, fast food. A really important thing to remember is that during this time, your low-level readers may feel overwhelmed. So it's important that you circulate and make sure that everyone has at least one key word that they can share with their story partners. Once I feel like everybody is ready and has a keyword to share, I'll have students stand up and find the five other students in their group by using the keywords that they have thought of. This is where the keywords students have chosen become so important. If they've identified a really excellent keyword, they'll be able to find their partners with relative ease. If they've chosen a bad keyword, it will take them forever. When the students have found all six members of their group, they put the story in its correct order. Our example story looks something like this. There are six sentence strips that go from first to sixth, from beginning to end, from start to finish. Once students feel that they have the story in the correct order, they should call their teacher over, who can check from a master copy like this. Once the teacher has checked that the story is correct, you should have students reread the story from start to finish. Doing so prepares students for the next part of the activity, the picture jigsaw. Each story comes with corresponding pictures, pictures that match the sentences you have given students. The picture illustrations should look something like this. I simply printed this paper out, deleted the numbers in each box, laminated the, the paper, and cut the pictures from the sentences. Not all stories will have illustrations that match each sentence that you give students. So something that I really love to do is find my most artistic students, give them the story the week before, and have them draw me 18 illustrations. When students have completed the story, next they move on to the comprehension worksheet. This worksheet uses the pictures from the story as prompts. Each picture has two questions that the students must answer. The really great part about these questions is that they allow you to level the playing field. Um, for your lower performing students, you might allow them to simply answer with one word sentences. Whereas your highest level achievers, your really high performing students, might be expected to have complete sentences that they elaborate on. When they have answered both questions, now it is their turn to ask the teacher a question. They use the blank provided in space number three 
to write a who, what, where, when, why, how, which question about the picture. Again, this is really super useful when you're dealing with a mixed level class. Lower level students might ask, who is she? Whereas higher level students might ask, how do you think she feels at the end of the day when the story is all finished? To recap, there are six important steps to remember when using this jigsaw activity. Number one, you have to break down your story into sentence strips. Give those strips to students and have them read the sentences. Next, after reading, students pick some key words from those sentences. Third, students find the other five partners of their story by exchanging their key words. Fourth, they put the story in order. They match the story's order with the pictures provided by the teacher. Fifth, they read the story. And sixth, they answer the questions on the comprehension worksheet. This activity went over extraordinarily well, and I hope you have as much fun and success using it as I did. Good luck!